I'm Jo. Hi, I'm Belle, and welcome to Bench Feed TV, Natural by Design. We're hoping to help you join the dots between pain feed and pain. So as we left you last time from our introduction, we were going to head into making Anzac cookies today. Something uncomplicated, something familiar here in Australia. Um, if you're not watching from Australia, Anzac Day is in honour of our war veterans. And the Anzac cookie was something that was created by the women here at home that was sent over to the soldiers. So it's kind of a tradition in our country. Simple uh, recipe, simple ingredients, but this is the sort of thing that Joe and I have talked about where we do a swap out of ingredients. Indeed. And what's the purpose for swapping something out? Well, sometimes you're aiming to make it a bit more nutritional, you found a new product that you want to use. So in my role as a home economist, we would often take recipes, swap out ingredients, just looking at the impact on the dish. Um, we did it from a purely testing point of view. Now we're looking at doing it, and, and this is kind of the stuff that I do at home, how I can make it more nutritional, how I can use some of those new products that are out there for us to explore. Cool. So in terms of customer interaction or you guys interacting with us, we're going to make uh, that as, uh, as seamless as possible. We have the uh, launch group uh, Instagram page, so that's launch group one. We've also got the Facebook page for those that are on Facebook. And we will have an email address in the notes below on the YouTube channel that we're rolling this out through so that you can get in contact with us and send us your own swap out recipes or something that you might like us to look at or feature and see if we can't um, change something out. Maybe you can't seem to get something to work and we will endeavor to do that for you. So without further ado, we're gonna dive right into our traditional little goodie, our Anzac Vicky, I'm super excited. Yeah. Uh, we have already um, trialed what we're going to do today. Yes, all those guinea pigs that are always out there for me to share and explore. Well, let, let's upgrade them and call them our test panel, shall we? Indeed Friends, we family, should. community. Our test that panel. have shared in the swap out process that they've done. Now look, you could have inadvertently done swap outs at home. The, the idea of that, that phrase is that you're taking an ingredient and swapping it for something else. Maybe you've done that because you've run out um, you know, you look for the next best thing. Part of what we're hoping to do is help you understand why something might be suitable as a swap out, you know, and what the impact on the recipe is. So again, while we're starting with something simple. So rundown of the basic ingredients of an Anzac cookie is your oats, flour, coconut, sugar, usually butter, golden syrup, some bicarb soda and boiling water. Yep. Pretty straightforward. Okay, this is I've already done this for myself and as we said, we've tested the recipes for you. So jump in and have a go later on if you'd like to. Let's start with our oats, shall we? Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So traditional rolled oats. Oh, there's the traditional oh, there's ones. Our rolled oats. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Rolled oats are used for making your porridge for breakfast in the morning. A new ingredient that we've seen hit the markets and again, it's all about what's trending at the time is Quinoa. quinoa. <laughs> All right, the beautiful quinoa flakes. And you can definitely see the difference in consistency between the uh, oats and the quinoa. The oats feel a little bit bigger and more robust, definitely. whereas the quinoa is a bit more softer and flakier, isn't it? It is. And, look, and these are um, raw rolled oats. You can get your quick oats, which are reduced a little bit in size and, yes. and would look similar. So yes. a lot of what we do, it's about a textual experience for you. Again, being brave, experiment, see what works for you. Creating new mindsets. But mindset. they're completely interchangeable. All right, sometimes it might seem a little bit daunting to jump straight in and take out that cup of rolled oats and put in a whole cup of quinoa. So what we're suggesting and what we've done with our test recipes is just gone half-half. So if you got, like the end product. Yeah, we've got half the foot in the water. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you like the end product, go the whole hog, put the whole cup of quinoa in. It's higher in protein. Again, just packing a bit more nutritional punch. Um, makes that little treat we might be giving our kids, sustain them a bit longer, a bit more energy. In terms of release, um, sugar release, that's a slow release sugar. Okay. So that um, you can sustain your energy longer rather than having that quick burst and then it dropping off. So yeah. it lasts you a lot longer in terms of um, people with diabetes. We see this type of thing all the time where that if you eat a high... Um, content sugar item mm -hmm. it shoots up and then there's a big drop out Plummet whereas the end, things like yeah. both the oats and the quinoa the quinoa even more so now yeah it keeps you at a sustained level for longer so you don't have those quick peaks and those low lows 
and you can and continue on go keep your metabolism going. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All what we're aiming for. Taste wise, I don't think you're going to be overpowered by much of a difference. No, there. I just think these are a little bit lighter in terms of in your stomach. Yeah. Like these can be a bit heavier. Yeah. Whereas I find this is just a bit more lighter. You All know. Right. Okay. Cool. Share us. Share your ideas with Number us. Number one down. Got. Pop those into the bowl. Okay, yeah. Now let's look at our next ingredient. Flour, Joe. Flour. What do you, what, what's your go-to when using flour? Okay, so I've had a gluten intolerant person in my house, mm -hmm. so I changed from normal flour to gluten-free flour a long time ago. Okay. Um, and I also changed out the flour when I couldn't even have the gluten-free flour to almond meal. Nice. Okay, so that's similar process that I've gone with today. I've used almond meal, but I'm happy to explore other flours. I've actually used buckwheat flour. Um, you can use coconut flour. You'll see that no, in I our two swap before, outs. Yeah. 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 Just be mindful of understanding your ingredients is what's going to be helpful. So if you look at our recipe notes later on, in the second swap out, we have put in coconut flour. And I've noted there for you, coconut flour doesn't have the same binding mm. quality mm. that our grain flours do. And it does absorb things a bit more. It kind of sucks yeah. the moisture up. So you it? need something to help with the binding. We've added an egg. It is going to change the consistency. We've noted that down. But in our tasting panel, some people really liked that. Mm. Others were happy to go the traditional crispy Anzac biscuit. So again, it's down to your choice, what's in your pantry, maybe what you want to use. So you've got the... So there's our almond, almond meal, meal or ground. And then I've got the buckwheat. So you can buckwheat. see there's a little bit of difference in colour. Yeah. But that's because both these products are similarly that colour as they are when they're ground In their up. natural state. And I make my own buckwheat and almond meal. So... Which is not what I do. But <laughs> that, that, again, these are the personal choices, you Absolutely. know. Our, our whole ethos is to eat as close to nature as possible. Mm -hmm. And on whatever level in terms of time and availability you've got, make that decision. How does that process work for you? Um, for me, um, I'm lucky enough to have a Thermomix, but it's been on the fritz, so yeah. I've had to use just a normal. <laughs> I had to use just a normal uh, food processor, and I can still do it in that too. So okay. you don't need to have to have that to be able to persevere to get it. Um, with the buckwheat, uh, you can either ground it as it is or activate it first. Okay. So that is a process of uh, submerging it in water for a couple of days and then drying it out, just um, gently drying it in the in the oven yep. for a little while so it becomes okay. a little bit crispier and then you can grind it down from there. Activation, it's a word we hear applied to grains, nuts. What What's kind of the general idea? The idea of activation, uh, it came about from people with different conditions like yeah. Crohn's and celiac and bits okay. and pieces, uh, but it's good for all of us. Yeah. And basically it's helping, it's it's breaking the, the seed down a little bit more to be able to withdraw all the the nutrients from it better. Okay. So we get more of that. All right. It's so it does have a digestive. specific application yeah. for some yeah, people. definitely. Again, if you're curious, ask a few more questions. Jo's got so much <laughs> All right, let's put those into our bowl. Okay, here's your one. All right. That's that's your one. All right, the next one. Next one we've got on our list is coconut. coconut. Pretty straightforward. We're not substituting anything for the coconut. In this instance, I've used desiccated just because it makes for a finer... Um, biscuit, but you could use shredded. Well, we talked about yeah. the fact that if you didn't have that in your um, pantry, pantry yeah. but you had coconut flakes or shredded coconut, you could chuck that in your um, in your food processor yeah. and grind it down to, to something like that, which would make it um, much more accessible. And the reason um, Belle was talking to me about this before is it, it's easier to bind in that small it, form. It, it is. So don't think you've got to go out and buy a different product. If you prefer to use shredded coconut in most of your cooking and most of what you eat, stick with it. It's and common sense bind. stuff, yeah. isn't it? It's it is. common sense stuff. It's like, where did it come from in its rawest form? And how do I break its raw form down to still be raw but be a little bit more accessible in my yeah in my recipes? Work for my pantry. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So our next ingredient is sugar. It's a topic all over. Oh, all the hot topic of conversation. <laughs> sugar. Okay. <laughs> not not saying you want to give it up. Um, you moderate it, use it, but let's not. Um, Fantasize that we're doing something amazing for ourselves in using what we're using here is Rapidura or Panella, it can sometimes be called. Yes. 
All right, in our swap out too, we've used coconut sugar. At the end of the day, it is still sugar. What this is doing is it's less processing. That's correct. Yeah, so it's not as processed. Um, the paneer is actually evaporated juice of the yeah. sugar cane. So it hasn't gone through that refinement process that we, you, you often hear people talk about sugars. It's either highly refined sugar mm -hmm. or it's in its rawest form. So how does it benefit us? It's easier digested. The chains on the sugar, so when you start to get down to the science of the matter, is that you've got um, different chains or different linking uh, molecules of, of your sugar. Some of them are harder for the body to break down. Some okay. of them are easier. So when you bring it back to its primary form, then you bring it back to its easier way to be digested and used throughout the system. And it does have a place. Yeah. Um, and you can reduce it. And on our other recipe, we did swap it out for... Coconut sugar. Coconut sugar and yeah. rice bread syrup, was it? Yeah, yeah, when we get down to talking about the golden syrup, we'll talk about yeah. you know, what we swapped it out there for. Yeah. So you're just helping, again, just stack another brick in the nutritional content, mm -hmm. all right? It retains minerals. Anything that has less processing and less interference is better is for you. natural yep. and going to have a greater nutrition and content. in terms of swapping it out we've used the same amount yeah that'd be correct we That's have what stumps people a lot like i want to swap it out but do i use the same amount yeah so in this instance yes we have we have and we'll always make those notes on the recipe as we go definitely all right so the next uh item on our list is butter all right, that's so all our dry that's all our dry ingredients in the bowl there. Mm. We'll give you. Shall we bring it over? Yeah, it looks great. Ooh, 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 ooh. See that there, ready looks to mix good. and go. So of course you're going to blend that all together before you add the wet ingredients. Right now we're just going to talk about those. So traditionally in Anzac biscuits, it's butter. What's your swap out for butter? Ah, uh, coconut oil. Yeah, and, and that's become yeah again a highly popular. The whole coconut everything about the coconut is what what's going on today yeah. people think we're reinventing the wheel oftentimes we're not and even in this recipe this you know my grandmother's recipe everyone's got an anzac biscuit recipe definitely but coconut oil has been around for longer than we realize what was its former name kofa kofa that's right, right. But it's a little bit different isn't it from it kofa. is because again that's where we're talking about it having gone through a process it was hydrogenated yep helped create the solid form, keep it more solid in transportation until heat was applied. Mm. Okay, we, we recognise that that's not making it the most nutritional that's right. for ourselves. It yep. increases the saturated fat. It so, does. Coconut oil. It's actually a really beautiful product to work with. And again, it creates an equivalent outcome to butter. I really mm. love working with coconut oil. I pretty much substitute it. Um, Belle and I were talking about what effect butter has on cooking so when you're using it mm -hmm. we were talking about its purpose yeah basically and the coconut oil does the same thing it, look you've always got to take a bit of um ask the question explore and and sometimes you'll experiment and it may not always work out in this instance with biscuits it has yeah it yeah. has and, and any recipe that you're going to get a hold of if Turn your kitchen into a test kitchen. I guess that's still where I'm at. That's mm. the curious person inside of Body. me. And I want to play and explore. Um, we all have access to a search engine to explore it for ourselves. Absolutely. And people have been really great in sharing that information. So we've tested it. Coconut oil. It works. Works same, same. Happy all days. Right, it's doing that. Our next little ingredient in Anzac Biscuits is golden syrup. So again, you're not going to get away from the fact that we're using a syrup, syrup. of some sort. Yes. But we have greater options in this day and age. So in our first one, this beautiful, luscious, dark syrup there is date syrup. Mmm, yummy. I know. <laughs> Joe was very much an advocate for the date syrup. Got very excited. So I explored it a little bit. Again, did you realise, Joe, that date syrup's not new? Although it's new to well, us and new on the market. Well, I only know it as date syrup, but you did inform me that you felt like you discovered it before, but it had a different name. It did. Yeah. And its origins are um, within Middle Eastern cooking. It's called salam, and, and that basically is date syrup. You can make your own. If and it makes it, it makes sense that it's from that Middle East because yeah. that's where your dates originate from and, yeah. and, and that's where all that, that nice tasting datey type of food yeah. comes from, isn't it? So So look you may have substituted honey before for golden syrup. The absolutely. thing is with the date syrup, it's got that really rich caramelization that you get from golden syrup. So yes. we are looking 
to create something that's got the same taste experience. I mean, and look almost yeah. too, because it does affect the look of the biscuit. The colour. Yeah. 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 Really positive outcome from our test panel. They all enjoyed the, the sweetness yes. of it and that caramelisation that was there. In our other swap out, we used rice malt syrup. We okay. did. Which all that did was maybe a little bit less on the sweetness, mm. but for some people, that's the one that they prefer. And in terms of density, I think the date syrup is a bit denser. Yeah, than you the can rice see bowl. how it rolls yeah. around the so bowl. It's a bit there. more of a molasses feel yeah. than the rice bran syrup is like a, a bit of a watered down honey. Yeah, it's yeah. like honey. Yeah. It very much is. Again, though, get out there in journeying and looking for all of these things. I discovered coconut nectar. All right. I know that the, the aspect to this is the cost. So you've got to mm. work that out for yourself. In looking at our recipe, you may only decide to do one or two. You know, you might stick because in your pantry, some of the original ingredients, do one or two. I then the only other ingredients are the bar carb soda and the boiling water and there, there's no options of swapping those out. So that's it, Jo. Okay, so you've seen our swap out of our ingredients. Really encourage you to have a go yourself. The method after that is pretty straightforward and we know you guys have got, you know, your skills down in the kitchen. Put your wet and dry ingredients together, get rolling those balls of Anzac cookies, pop them into the oven for the designated time. And then it's time to sit and enjoy the end product, which I think, Joe, you and I are pretty much ready for that point. We've managed to save some we from did. our test batches. Look at these goodies. So the outcome in using different ingredients, this is um, the one where we use buckwheat flour. Um, mm. The difference you may see is when you, as, as described in the method there, some feedback we got when using the coconut flour, adding the egg did actually make it seem a bit more like... A bit like of a, a mini rock, rock cake. Yeah, so a bit softer in texture, right? You're going to get those variations. You might like it, okay? So if that's the way you want to go, half our crew wanted to keep it that way, the other half want the very traditional snappy little Anzac biscuit that we'll be enjoying with our cup of tea shortly. Definitely. So thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope that um, we've been able to inspire some... Uh, new ways of thinking, maybe a, a bit of a new product for you um, so that you can get out there and be brave and robust in the kitchen. Uh, we've always, we always have fun doing this. We so. do, absolutely. <laughs> we hope you are too. And we really are keen to hear from you and connect with you. So please check us out on the socials. Uh, all the notes for the method and the ingredients are in um, the notes below yeah. so you can get everything you need plus uh, Belle's um, done that second uh, version of the recipe so we've got that there too so trying to fill you guys up with as much info as we can uh, next episode we are going to look at another pantry staple for both of us which is the Chia seeds. Oh, the chia seed. And yeah. what will we do with that? Well, you'll have to tune into us to find that out. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get that notification get into those cookies. I know we're going to be. And we look forward to seeing you soon. See you later, guys. Bye.